Well, you know, we're all playing defense, and we've been doing that since ransomware really did an uptick right around 2016. John, when you look at ransomware, uh, you know, basically with the proliferation of digital currencies like Bitcoin, you have anonymous currency that you can profit from. And so that really escalated the growth of ransomware to really a state of pandemic levels and intolerable levels. So we are seeing the U.S. look at how do we respond as a nation? How do we start imposing risk and consequence to the actors behind all the extortion and ransomware attacks we're seeing? Now, uh, closer to home, I, I want to ask you not just about the macro, but about uh, FireEye, Mandy, in, in particular. You've announced this intent to uh, spin off the product sure. business, sort of sell off that. And, uh, you know, I've been hearing from some investors concern that the price is too low. So, you know, as that process continues, uh, how are you fielding those concerns, especially given um, the value of some of these assets out in the market these days that, that other companies have? Sure. Well, first, you have to look at we ran a process. We had Goldman Sachs on board and we got the best offer that we got, you know, and we've got to move forward. We have a Mandian brand that is the best in the world at responding to security breaches, figuring out what happened and what to do about it. We have a global threat intelligence grid in the private sector. We've never seen anything like it. Over 200 threat analysts that speak over 30 languages in 20 countries trying to figure out beyond the tech who's doing these attacks, why are they doing it, and how do we impose risk through diplomacy and policy? So the bottom line, we had to segregate our businesses of controls with FireEye products with controls agnostic Mandiant because people really want that Mandiant brand protecting them. And we wanted Mandiant to work with all the different controls products out there, not just FireEye. So by decoupling these businesses, it's actually better for both businesses, John. And Kevin, looking broadly at these issues and the rising threats, how important is the idea of creating an international consortium to create some standards for how, how these threats are addressed? Right. Well, you have to band together. Everybody's sick of ransomware. And I'm hopeful that we'll come up with rules of engagement or rules of the road, at least for criminal actions. You know, we have a global economy. So that means you have to behave a certain way as a nation to be part of that global economy. And so I think that you're going to see nations band together and do their best to impose risk and consequence to ransomware actors or the countries that harbor ransomware actors. I'm less hopeful that we're going to agree on rules of the road for cyber espionage because the asymmetry period is advantageous to some nations. And I'm speaking to that asymmetry in cyberspace where you know most nations cannot be if if any nation they can't tackle the united states with tanks guns planes submarines but in cyberspace it's more equal footing and maybe even there's an advantage uh, against the United States in the cyber domain. So the bottom line, we need rules of the road. We need nations working together to agree to enforce those rules. Kevin Mandia, thank you.